Hey guys, another Ray Depp here. Welcome back to How to Make a Game Like Slap Battles, Part 6. In today's video, we added three things. Number one, our slap sound effects. So you can see, if I hit, it makes a slap noise. Number two, there's the ability cooldown. So if I were to activate my ability, you can see a cooldown is activated. And as you can see, this works with every cooldown, no matter what the, how, how long the cooldown is. And it has phone compatibility as well. Another thing we added is Death Ragdoll, so if I were to walk off, you can see that I get ragdolled. Also, if I were to reset character, I also get ragdolled. Congratulations to Alex or Camero Cameron Louie Louis 1 for winning today's daily giveaway. Sorry if I pronounced that ran wrong. I hope you enjoy your 15 Robux. Make sure you join the group for a chance to win 15 Robux anyway, in every video. Anyway, back to the video. See you. Alright guys, I am in my slap battle tutorial world here, and the first thing we're gonna do is work on our sound. So we're gonna open up server storage, open up the hands folder, and you're just gonna choose a glove and insert a script. You can go ahead and rename the script to sound handler. Alright, but before we do anything, uh, we're going to go to the tool back, toolbox open up the audio tab and we're going to get a slap sound effect all right this one is good right here since you found yours you're just going to click the insert key and if it didn't insert into the script you're just going to move the sound effect into the script you can then go ahead and rename your sound effect to slap sound and in the sound handler script we're going to add in a string value which we can go ahead and rename the value to cool down. So in this cooldown value, you're going to set the cooldown for whatever glove you have um, added the script into. So you're gonna um, so for whatever glove you added the script into, for me the default glove, you're gonna set the cooldown value. You're gonna set the value of cooldown to be that glove's cooldown. So. For me, it is 2.5 seconds for the default glove. So you will set the value of cooldown to whatever your cooldown is. So in the sound handler, you can go ahead and get to scripting. So the first thing we're gonna do is set a value for the cooldown. So local cooldown is going to be equal to um, script.cooldown.value. We're gonna set a variable for the tool. So local tool is equal to script dot parent. I'm gonna set a variable for debounce. So local debounce is going to be equal to false. And we're going to set a variable for the sound effect that's inside the script. So local sound effect is going to be equal to script dot slap sound. So now we're gonna check when the tool is activated and we'll connect to a function. So tool the activated colon connect function you will set no parameters so we're gonna set check if the debounce is true or if the cooldown is still running so we will do if debounce then and we are simply going to return all right so after um the first end we're gonna go down two lines then we're gonna do debounce equals true. We're gonna play the sound effect, so SFX colon play. We're going to wait our cool down, and then we're gonna set the debounce to false. So now that we are done with our sound handler script, what we are going to do is we're gonna right click and copy it. And in each of these other hands, we can right click and click paste into selected. So now all that we need to do for our sound effects is adjust the sound or the cooldown for each of these other scripts. So if we open up the cooldown value we created instead of being er, for the green glove, instead of being 2.5 seconds for cooldown, we were going to do 2.4 seconds for the red glove instead of doing being um, 2.5. We're going to set the cooldown to the red glove's cooldown, which is 2.3 seconds. And for the yellow glove, 
instead of being 2.5 seconds for the cooldown value, you're just going to do 2 seconds, alright? So now if we test it out, once we're in our game, if we clip our glove, and we were to smack, you can see it plays the sound effect. Alright, perfect. And if we were to um, change our glove to, let's say, the green glove, if we were to smack, it also works, and it works with all the other gloves. As you can see, the other gloves work as well. So the next thing we're going to work on is our ability cooldown GUI. So in started GUI, you can go ahead and open up the ability GUI and the text button. In the text button, you're going to add in a text label, which you can go ahead and rename to cooldown label. What we're going to do is we're going to set the size of it to be 0, 0, 1, 0. So you can see it's only a little sliver. You're going to set the background color to be black. The background transparency is going to be 0 0.5. And you can make the vis visibility to off so it's invisible. And also you can set the text. You can just go ahead and delete the text and the text label. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up Starter Player. We're going to open up Starter Player Scripts. And we're going to open up our input handler. Because we are going to make um, our GUI that we just created, um, our cooldown label, we are going to make it move. So first of all, on the top of the script, we are going to create a variable um, for the GUI for the label itself. So we're going to do local label. It's going to be equal to game dot players dot local player dot player GUI colon wait for child. And we get the ability GUI. And we're gonna do dot text button dot cooldown label like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to go to event one and after line this is local cooldown. We're gonna do local original cooldown and you're gonna set it to the same number that we set for our cooldown. So for our cooldown it's three seconds, so our original cooldown is also three seconds. And this is going to be important for the script. After that, we can go down and we're going to do label.parent.visible is equal to true. So we're on computer, but we're making this button visible. And we're also going to disable the local script that's in this button so that way we can't click on it while we're on computer. So we're going to do label.parent.localscript dot um disabled is equal to true so once we get to our line this is wait cooldown we are going to go ahead and delete this line and instead we're going to do while wait 0 0.1 0 0.1 do and this is what's going to move our gui so we're going to do cooldown it's going to be equal to cooldown minus one or 0 0.1 so what this line does is the cooldown right here, our cooldown variable is basically working as a timer. So every 0.1 seconds, our timer of three seconds goes down by 0.1 seconds. And now we're gonna make the GUI size. So we're gonna do GUI, er, so we're gonna do label, uh, label dot size is going to be equal to udim2 dot new. We're gonna do cooldown forward slash or divided by um, or original cooldown and then we're going to do comma zero comma one comma zero so what this is doing is we're setting the size of it to the cooldown divided by the original cooldown which is going to make it count down so now we're going to check if the cooldown is up so if cooldown is less than or equal to zero then we're going to set the label size back to the way it is right now so we're going to do label dot size it's going to be equal to udim2 dot new and we're going to do zero comma zero comma one comma zero and we're going to make the gui invisible so we're going to do label dot parent dot visible is equal to false and lastly, we're going to break the loop. 
All right, so that is it for our first event. Now we're just gonna do the same exact thing for our second event. So on our second event, I'm gonna set variable for the original cooldown. So local original cooldown is equal to 15, just like this cooldown right here. And then we're gonna do label.parent.visible is equal to true. And we're gonna do label dot label dot parent dot local script dot disabled is equal to true and then again we're going to replace this co wait cooldown and instead we're going to create a loop so we're going to do while wait 0 0.1 do same thing as before so cooldown is equal to cooldown minus 0 0.1 then we're going to do label dot size is equal to udem2 dot new I'm going to do a cooldown forward slash, um, which means divided by uh, original cooldown, comma, zero, comma, one, comma, zero. And then we're going to check if the cooldown is less than zero. So if the cooldown's up, so if cooldown is less, or, or is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to make the size go back to normal. So label dot size is equal to udem2 dot new. 0 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 we're gonna make it the GUI invisible so label dot parent dot visible is equal to false and then lastly we're going to break the script so if we were to test it out with our default glove once we activate our ability the thing pops up but the size doesn't actually move so what is causing that Alright guys, we figured it out. It's actually because I left this cooldown label invisible. So we're going to make sure the label visible is equal to true. Anyway, so now if I were to activate my ability, you can see that it goes down until the ability runs out. And then I can click it again, and it goes down again for 3 seconds. Alright, so if I were to equip my red glove, and I click E, you can see the bus spawns in and it starts going down for 15 seconds. Now there is one thing left to, left to do. That is, of course, phone compatibility. So if we open up the local script inside of our text button, first thing we're gonna do is again, set a variable for the label. So after this, these lines right here, we're gonna do local label. It's going to be equal to script.parent.cooldownlabel. Alright, so back in our first ability, again, we're going to set a variable for our original cooldown. So local original cooldown is equal to 3, just like this cooldown right here. And we're also going to do label.visible is equal to true. And then we're going to replace this cooldown with a loop. So while wait 0.1 do. And we're just going to do the same thing as we did before. So in this loop, again, we're going to do cooldown. Cooldown is equal to cooldown minus 0 0.1. And then we're going to set the size. So label dot size is equal to udem2 dot new. And again, we're going to do cooldown forward slash original cooldown comma 0 comma 1 comma 0. So we're going to check if the cooldown has run up and run out. So if it's less than zero. So if cooldown is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to do label dot size. So that size is equal to udem2 dot new. Zero comma zero comma one comma zero. And then we're going to do label dot visible is equal to false. So now we're just making a cooldown label invisible so you can't see it anymore. And again, we're going to break the loop. So for the bus event, we can do the same thing. You can do local ori original cooldown is equal to 15. And we're going to do label dot visible is equal to true. Right, so again, we're going to replace this wait cooldown. Um, with this loop actually we can just go ahead and copy this loop right here So we're just gonna go ahead and copy these lines and just paste them 
uh, where this weight cooldown is. And just like that, we should be done. I just need to fix the spelling of original cooldown. There we go. Alright, so I figured out a bug. As you can see, if I click E, and then I reset character, and then I click E again, you can see it says, Attempt to index nil with visible. So in order to fix this, um, in our input handler, instead of the local label being up here, we are going to put it inside of um, this area right here. So after local original cooldown, we're just going to paste this. And down here as well, after local original cooldown, we're going to paste that as well. Same thing with our local script right here. Instead of having our label variable right here, we're going to cut it out. And we are just going to paste it um, after the original cooldown variable on both of these. And that should fix our bug. So as you can see, if I were to click E, and then reset character, and then click E again, you can see that it no longer shows our bug. So now if we go to and click this little phone icon for our phone view, and click play, once we go down here with our default club, as we click it, you can see that it starts counting down, and then we can click it again. So now the last thing we're going to need to do, or actually the second last thing we're going to need to do, is in server script service, we're going to create add in a script. This is going to be our ragdoll on death. You can go ahead and rename it ragdoll. Now this script was not made by me, it was made by newbie. I will have a link to his channel and his video in the description. And I will also have the script for be copied and pasted from the comments below since it is not my script. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the comment section and paste the script into server script service, alright? And just like that, if we were to go ahead and play it, if we go ahead and reset character, you can see that I die. Again, I'm not going over how to do it because it's not my script. If you want to learn how to do it, you have to watch his video. But there's one problem. If we were to delete base plate and then fall off, you can see that instead of dying and ragdolling, we just disappear. And that is because we are being void destroyed, which is the same thing that happens to an object when you use um, colon destroy in a script. So what we're going to do to fix this is, first of all, you can delete the base plate, right? And we're going to insert a part, and you're going to scale this part to cover more than the entire island. And we're just going to make a kill part. So once you have your part, you can move it down, just right below the island. So in, you can go ahead and rename this part to kill part and you can go ahead and anchor it you can turn can collide to off and cast shadow off as well and you can set the transparency to one so it is invisible i'm going to make this part a bit bigger as well just like that so in this part you can add in a script so we're just going to script a simple kill script so we're going to do script dot parent dot touch colon connect function set the parameter to hit so we're gonna check when a player hits it or if whatever touched it was a player so if hit dot parent colon find first child humanoid then so we're checking if it's a player we're gonna do hit dot parent dot humanoid dot health is going to be equal to zero so simple script, checking when the part's touched, we're checking if a player has hit it, or if they have a humanoid, it's determining if they're a player, and we're setting their health to zero. So now, we should, instead of being just instantly deleted, we should ragdoll. So if I were to go up here, and, well, I get hit off, oh no, you can see that I ragdoll on my way down, before getting deleted to the void. Just like that. Anyways, if you did enjoy this video and it helped you, you should leave a like and subscribe. Anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.